All right, guys, let's move on. Uh, show you some Ghana Premier League highlights. First up, Hearts of Oak, they played on Saturday. Uh, they took on Accra Lions. It was a, uh, a, an Accra derby, if you like, and it was a convincing victory for them. 3-0, they won. Take a look. Referee whistles, game underway here at the Accra Sports Stadium. Samari delivers. And Amankwa is very alert on that side. Awaku. Obin Jr. Here is Salifu. Apia Kubinao. Daniel Afriya Barnier makes it 1 0 for the Phobians. Apia Kubi applied the save, but Barnier was on hand to apply the finishing touch from the rebound. And Salifu, this is what Hartsfuck have missed in this tide. A player who's got the ability to wiggle around bodies, he's got imagination. Here they come again, Hartsfuck. Now B Jr. Brilliant save from Apiakubi. And Bania will go to congratulate him. That's an amazing save. Referee whistles. Hamidou delivers. Deflects off the wall for a corner. That's a nasty challenge. Yeah, look at how high he gets. And he catches him on his ankle. That is a reckless challenge. If of the game is trying to prevent now the referee is going to give the card and it's, it's a red card yes hamidou swings one in and Ayi is just alert and grabs it firmly for the phobians hamidou kills one in and half time at the accra sports stadium accra lions nil that's one Whistles, and here we go for second half football here at the Accra Sports Stadium. The Phobians pushing for the second, and what a goal they scored. Yeah, one moment they are defending, at that moment they are finishing it. But the goalkeeper is already, you know, wrong foot, and he can't, even though it's not the most powerful effort. Samari's delivery. Good goalkeeping from Ai. But it's Hatsabok still pushing for the 10. Good goalkeeping and great defending from Abu Mensah. Muntari's corner. Oh, that's the third goal. Daniel Afriya Bani gets his brace. It has been game over for a while, but this one is the ice on the kick. Muntari's weapon, the ball is really good. And it falls perfectly on the head of Bani. Bani didn't even need to really jump. All right, so Hatsabok. Uh... Secure their first away win in eight games. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, Three 0 win, as convincing as it gets. Kotoko, top of the league. They lost last weekend to RTU, so they needed to get back to winning ways, and they had the perfect opposition to do so. Legon Cities, who had been very inconsistent, with the former Kotoko coach Maxwell Knodu coming to town. Well, he ended in tears for the Porcupine Warriors. Hey, for this epic encounter. Well picked up by Hans Kofi. Seems to be good enough. Jonah took ways in a scoring position. Checks in but slips in the process. Ball is cleared. But Salom Yao Bless has given the advantage of a penalty. In a very good position. Very, very dangerous player. Would turn beautifully here. Yeah. It seems there was contact. He makes himself big. And the goal post here. Legon Cities go one, two, three. Let's go number one for Legon Cities. Superb penalty. Expertly taking penalty. Just look at how I was able to swap the goalkeeper. It's crossed in nicely. Oh! Where was the marking? Registers a goal in his name. What a way to score your fourth goal of the season. Ripped apart again. Just look at the pass from Hans Kofi. And then he moved from, from where he moved from. Nobody located the run of Hans Kofi. Another opportunity for Imoro to bend one through. Pressure on men. Kotoko get themselves back into the game. That's the man who came on just a few minutes ago. No marking whatsoever. Just look at that delivery. Superb one. It wasn't dealt with the first time. But just look at with a serial with a perfect pinpoint header and the supporters. Michel Oto and well. Referee Salom Yao Blessed believes that we've had enough. But it's half time here at the Baba Yara Stadium. Well, we're back here at the uh, Baba Yara Stadium. Illegal City is playing so well as well as Kotoko. 
Tukwe has been let loose once again. Sent in a decent cross. The header is on and Lagos City is restored. I tell you, Sifu with a brilliant pass and Atukwe with that wonderful delivery and two Lagos Cities were waiting for that cross. Hans Kofi got at the end of it and bang at the back of the net. That lad had no chance at all. And Lagos City is at this stage playing with so much confidence. Fabio Gama with the shot and again it's grabbed nicely. Swings one in. Oh! Another free header. Straight into Noya. And who was there? Nobody there. It was a oh. free header. Motoko come forward. Now a decent cross. Whoa. That nearly resulted in a comeback goal. Some were brought in with that header. Just look at that header. And the referee brings. Well, um, it's a game where a lot of people will say Kotoko deserve to lose. Um, horrible defending, and they paid dearly for it. Let me show you the full results from match week 26 of the Ghana Premier League. So there you go. House of victory was on Friday night. Ashko won away from home at Great Olympics in Accra. A great game for them. Midyama also beat Wafa. So Wafa can keep a consistent run going. After you followed up. Their victory over Kotoko with a draw away at Elmina Sharks, fellow relegation candidates. So that was crucial. Kim Faisal finally avoided defeat for the first time in eight games. They uh, got a one all draw at Dreams. Gold Stars beat 11 Wonders 1 0. Chelsea 1 0 against the Jana Stars as well. Kotoko's defeat confirmed there. Pichim United and Karela United is on Monday night at uh, 3 p.m. Let me show you the table. So if Pichim United can win that game tomorrow, they cut Kotoko's lead at the top to five points. At the moment, though, it remains at eight points. House of Hoops victory took them up to fit on the table with 40 points. So they're still a long way off from the top, uh, top point difference. And as you can see, the nine games remaining to the end of the season. After you are out of the relegation zone, they are now 15th on the table. Uh, taking their place are 11 wonders. Uh, who have now moved a step downward. Wafa couldn't follow up their victory from last weekend with another one. They lost again, which means they remain rooted second from bottom. Elmina Sharks, there you see, they failed to beat Kim Fais, uh, uh, sorry, ITU, and they remain bottom of the table. All right, um, let's put some little perspective on, on the games. House of Oaks victory, obviously, um, looked very routine. Great victory for them. Let's focus a little bit more on heart, uh, sorry, Kotoko and their defending, uh, especially coach. You were watching, <laughs> you were shaking your head, couldn't believe what you were seeing. And uh, especially following what we saw last weekend, mm -hmm. where it almost looked like they gifted a lot of the goals from goalkeeping mistakes, defensive errors. They followed that up with another shambolic showing. Look. That's six points dropped. This is, we've said this throughout the season, that the number of chances that Kotoko tends to give the opposition is becoming too unbecoming. Yeah. And for me, they lack proper leadership at the back. I have always said on this show that if the other teams were a bit clinical or deadly, Kotoko shouldn't be leading the league with the margin. Yes, maybe they'll be leading the league, but not with the margin of points that yeah. they, are, they are currently that At some leading. point, it was even 12 points. Yes. Now it's eight, even it's though eight. they've lost two back-to-back -back games. games. It tells you of the standard of the league, isn't it? Yeah. If this is the sort of defending they are going to show in the Champions League, because by virtue of the fact that they are going to win the league, surely we've got no future. And for me, the level of indecision among the Kotoko players is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at some of the key moments Not in the at game. this level. Yeah. Not at this level. Look. Look, First of all, let's call a spade a spade. There was no way this was a penalty. Yeah. We have looked at it over and over again and again. For me, you see, when so these yeah, things so happen, what's wrong here? I tend to look at the position of the referee. On for, you see, if you look at where the referee was coming from, I think he had a very clear view. Yeah. So there was absolutely no way he should have gotten this wrong. So here's the... Now look so at you it. can tell... The Kotoko, similar to the House of Folk one. Yeah. The so he doesn't defender, touch it, he does stick out his leg. His leg is even in front. <laughs> That's what makes it serious. If my leg is in front of you, how do I touch you? You understand? And if you look at the referee's position, there was absolutely no way 
he, could, he should have awarded this as And a we have set the precedent now. It means he also gets a ban. It's as simple as that, because this is even worse. <laughs> this is even worse than the one given to Kotoko against Asafo. Yeah. At least that one, you could clearly see that the there Asafo was player was very close. There was, but this one, there was absolutely no body contact whatsoever. So Kotoko conceded from a very bad penalty. And then, and then this. let's look at this. Look, it's almost criminal. Uh, Hans Kofi, he linked up play. He picked up the ball in front of the Kotoko defense, laid the pass out wide, and then in his movement into the box, no Kotoko defender, nobody track his run. Mm. And to me, that is amazing. That is shocking. Okay? But at the end of the day, the manner in which this thing keeps recurring, you have to look at the technical team and say, guys, what sort of defensive principles or routine have you been taking the Kotoko defenders through? At this level, you expect that as a block, as a defensive block, their movement should be in sync with each other. Absolutely nothing of the sort is being seen. And for me, it's shambolic. It's Kinagant, it's primary. If this is the sort of defending they are going to take to the Champions League, Thank you. They won't go beyond the first knockout stage. That is true. They will not. This is unacceptable. The look, first he shifts the ball out he the ball. He's making a run infield. Look at nobody look picks at, the run. Look at the defender who is going to close the ball. Look if I'm the coach, if if I'm the coach, if we could go back again to that second goal, I want to highlight the Kotoko's defender, yeah. defender in particular, who had a chance to go and block the cross. If you know, not this one, the second goal. If you could go back. To see his recovery, yeah. I do believe that if you are in the defensive transition and your responsibility is to go and close in the cross or try and block the cross from coming, you don't recover like that. This is very reminiscent of Wambisaka so, yes. against Everton, Man United yeah. against Everton. Yeah. The goal that you United considered when the ball was played out wide, you are the fullback. The player has one intention. To put the ball in the in, in the butt, there must be that agency, that desire, that determination from the fullback to go and close the player down. We didn't see anything of the sort. Yeah. And again, where was the two centre backs of Kotoko? Absolutely no sleeping on the found. job. And for me, look, you highlight such things, but you want to look beyond this game. And looking beyond this game is Kotoko's participation in the Champions League. If they don't put an end to this. This kindergarten crutch way of defending, yeah. then clearly we'll go another season without having a team in the group stages of the Champions League. And to me, that's it. Look at him. Look at the Kotoko defender. Is that how to go and close? Come and get closer to him. Yeah. There must be that determination, drive on your part to try and block in the cross. If you give the player this manner, this sort of space, and look at the cross. He picked it so deliciously. Yeah. All Hans Kofi needed to do was to just tap it into an empty net. Right. Done that, no chance. Okay.